continuing to understand the understanding of stress according to modern science let us move on to see what are all the further changes that happen in the body in this stress adaptation program that is programmed into our system we understood what are the changes in the respiratory system cardiovascular system muscular system digestive system now what are the changes in the nervous system all our senses become hyper alert and sleep goes away so alertness level increases the senses become much more sensitized and it's of course the nervous system which controls all other functions coming to the blood the blood clots more during stress because whenever there is a trauma in case there is some bleeding blood has to clot clot quickly so the clotting system gets activated and therefore stress and clotting platelet adhesiveness increases to make the blood clot faster there is another mega system in the body which has to really cope up with this demanding situation that is our immune system so the immune system is the one which has to fight away any infection or enemy dangerous material that enters into our body and remove scavenge away all the foreign material that may be entering into the body therefore the immune system becomes much more active and fighting capacity increases i'll give you one simple example there was a very interesting experiment that was carried out where they wanted to see what happens to the immune cells which are our immune cells our white blood cells which are all the time circulating like vigilant vigilant officers in the entire brain to the limb parts in every part of the body white blood cells various types of white blood cells neutrophils eosinophils lymphocytes monocytes basophils these are all different types of white blood cells that are all the time circulating in the body and their job is to see that there is always a immune surveillance or defense surveillance continuously there is a defense system which is watching whether there is any danger and trying to protect the body from any danger so in this experiment what they did was they had tagged some boy white blood cells with some traceable material and they could doc- see on the screen how they are circulating how they are moving in the whole body and somebody just pricked the hand of the person where the circulation was being monitored just a small deep prick on the hand they were able to see how all the white blood cells from all parts of the body changed their direction of movement to move towards the prick part of the body that is the amount of communication that is the amount of quickness with which the body can respond to a demanding situation through our immune system we'll talk about immune system a little more as we move along because that's one of the major major system that is involved in our understanding of your stress and health so so we have responded hey, what did we start a fire alarm we had to run from here all these changes happened we escaped fought the fire and it was a really dangerous fire situation where all of us had to get really tired exhausted and then we had to really rush get water put out the fire and some of us had to escape run 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 to long distances some elderly people had to be protected children had to be protected real hard work was carried out then one hour everything is over then what happens then we feel tired exhausted we want to rest so stimulation strong activation of all the system and diversion of all the functions and then when the system is out of danger we have to rest relax restore rejuvenate so we all go to a safe place calm place lay down relax and now we start feeling hungry we want to eat eat and drink and then we sleep rest and cancel all our appointments for the day and then next day we are ready back to normal 
to take on our normal functions. So this is the nature's helpful program to cope up with the demanding situation by a strong stimulation and then rest, relax, restore normalcy. And this is the time all the damaged tissues, if there was any damage in the form of trauma or even due to stress chemicals, stress proteins as we call it, stress chemicals that would have damaged the system, we have to restore the system by detoxifying the system, by better urination, better defecation and healthy diet would also help in doing that and then the system has a wonderful capacity to restore, rejuvenate and revitalize the system and also replace any damaged tissues if there was any damage in a very quick way by stimulating the regenerative gene programming. Now, imagine this we understood as a useful response pattern when there is a physically challenging situation, when there is enough of response and rest. But come to the psychologically challenging situation, exactly same thing happens. Whenever we get response, somebody insults us for example. Somebody has insulted you and you are terribly upset. When you are upset, what happens? All these changes. The muscle tone increases, but we don't have to run, so only muscle is tense, 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 more tense, more tense, more tense. The heart rate increases, blood pressure increases, the heart force of contraction increases, breathing rate increases, digestion goes down, sweating increases, blood vessel constriction happens in the kidney. All the changes that we saw, which was helping me to run away to protect myself from the danger, is happening sitting here, in one place where I am hurt, where I am disturbed, where I am angry, where I am tensed, working, working, working on the computer, overcome, is not getting finished, not getting finished, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, will I finish the work on time or not, looking at the watch hundred times, mind is getting tensed up, tensed up, tensed up, and therefore hyper alertness, hyper sensitivity of the senses, all those changes that we understood is happening sitting here and that is the one which is some to some extent helping me to work faster and I am more alert, more sharp and the senses are sharper and I have not much hunger because of the stressful and demanding situation. It helped me initially to cope up with the demand of the speed of the work also. But this is not generally what happens. We become over anxious, over tense, over angry, excessive anger, excessive tension, which may go on to depression also. And when we enter into depressive phase, all our capacities collapse. So acute stress or short term stress psychologically to some extent mild anxiety we may call it as mild tension. The typical example is that a mother gets worked up about child going to an exam. Let us take the example. So a mother is worked up, child also is a little worried, very good uh, academically strong boy, has to appear for 12th standard and lot of tension, lot of work to be finished. So the child's mind, lot of tension is building up. So hey, what are the sentences in the mind? Oh, I have to go and face this important exam. I have to get 90% marks, therefore I should prepare very well. Why 90? Nowadays 99.9 .9 marks is the one which our children have to aim for. And therefore work, work, work. So that helps the child to reduce the appetite and keep the mind away from all other things, concentrate better and feels a little more uh, activity in the heart, activity in the breathing, etc. which help them to cope. But what happens just before entering the exam hall, if the child is a more anxious child or the mother, definitely very anxious mother, what is happening in the mother's mind? The same anxiety which helped her to help the child and the child who helped himself to go to the preparatory phase now entered into over anxiety phase which causes lot of problem and creates difficulties. So short term mild stress 
even for psychologically challenging situations are helpful to cope up with a demanding situation but even in this type of situation i am taking the example of an examination is a child who gets anxious even for the exam may not suffer with hypertension or heart disease why before after the exam they have enough relaxation time ab uh, exam is over i'll go for a holiday i'll go for a trekking i'll have good friends enjoy eating and sleeping so rest is very necessary after the even the short term psychologically challenging situation where the rest can help them to cope up with the demanding situation so let us now move on to understand how does the body help in this adaptation we understood what is the definition of stress we understood what are the changes that happen in the body now let us see how the programming happens that helps in this coping mechanism the entire human system has got two major control systems that is the nervous system and the hormonal system electrical system and the chemical system electrochemical control mechanisms help in carrying out all these changes in the system so our nervous system our brain human brain enormously developed brain has got two parts of the nervous system one is the voluntary nervous system other one is the involuntary nervous system or the autonomic nervous system so autonomic nervous system is the which is the one which is basically used in this automatic adjustments of this program changes that have to happen in the body to cope up with the demanding situations so all these changes that we talked about are all controlled by the autonomic nervous system and this nervous system in the brain also controls the chemical system or the hormonal system or the endocrine system so the endocrine system is controlled by the nervous system so let us see what is the autonomic nervous system changes that happen when we have to cope up with a demanding situation the autonomic or the automatic nervous system has got two portions the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system the sympathetic nervous system sympathizes with us to cope up with a demanding situation and therefore it is called sympathetic nervous system so sympathetic nervous system is the one which stimulates the whole mind body complex to cope up with a demanding situation and it's the parasympathetic nervous system which is all the time monitoring the restorative function at the base level of function so when there is a demanding situation the sympathetic nervous system activates then the sympathetic nervous system cools down parasympathetic nervous system takes on or the basic functions of restorative functions of the body so this is the stress adaptation mechanism which is carried out by the sympathetic nervous system how does the sympathetic nervous system getting get activated the sympathetic nervous system consists of a network of fibers which are all entire nervous system how does it work it's a electrical grid with neurons or cells which are connected to each other in the form of wirings and transportation of information from one cell to another happens through these dendrites or the fibers and then they have long axons which connect into the different parts of the body and it's all entirely an electrical grid so similarly the even the sympathetic nervous system parasympathetic nervous system is also an electrical grid with its focus in the hypothalamus which is a small group of cells situated below the brain stem under the thalamus so now let us understand the fire alarm has gone what happened the immediately the sound vibrated your eardrum 
mechanical energy. The sound energy got converted into mechanical energy. And this mechanical energy was transmitted, amplified through small little bones that are there in the middle ear, which went in, which touched the fluid in the inner ear, which started turbulence. And that turbulent energy is picked up by the sensors in the ear, the auditory nerve endings, which convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy and these are the receptors, all parts of the body, the nervous system has got different receptors. So these are auditory receptors in the auditory nerve. So this carries the information to the auditory part of the brain and from the brain the information is projected to our mind and in the mind I perceive it as, my God this is a fire alarm, I have to do something about it and immediately the electrical current is passed on to the complicated network of fibers and thus complicated network of fibers in the limbic cortex, emotional cortex in activates the fear response. So fear, limbic cortex increased activity and limbic, limbic cortex activity increases the activity in the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is the stress button which is the seat for the sympathetic nervous system. So that sends down a big array of information down the entire sympathetic pathway to all parts of the body to carry out all the functions that we saw. Respiratory system, the air passage dilate, breathing rate increases, the force of contraction of the heart increases and then the digestive constriction happens and all the other changes that we saw. Blood glucose increases because of the sympathetic activation and therefore these are all the changes that the sympathetic nervous system activation can do. How does the sympathetic nervous system give the information at the terminal point near the heart? It releases another chemical called adrenaline and noradrenaline. So this sympathetic nervous system not only releases directly at its nerve endings, but it also activates the adrenal gland which is situated as a cap on the kidney on both sides in the adrenal medulla where adrenaline and noradrenaline are released into the blood. So adrenaline and noradrenaline at the nerve ending and circulating in the blood is the one which carries out all these activities on the entire musculoskeletal and visceral parts, the internal organ changes that we are seeing. Let us continue in the next episode.